name is Kostadinos Kaftarku, and we are a year three group of exercise science. And this is my, my friends here that, that we're going to perform the test, we have two tests. Introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Lucas Yerasimu. We are going to test today our athlete, Kostadinos. He's a football player. Hello, my name is Kiraos Getir. Hello, my name is Moïse Osoliriu. Hello, my name is Christopher Osoliriu. Hello, I'm Zanet Tudmidilis. We will perform the VO2 max with a professional football player, Osandio uh, Nivolaidis, who is 22 years old. And we will uh, show all the procedure from the start until the finish, where we will explain the results and see what areas he needs to improve. And I think we are ready to start. Hello, my name is Luis Pazalas. Home is a VO2 max, which is a maximum oxygen consumption, and it is regarded to be the gold standard in fitness, in aerobic fitness. Uh, and it's one test that is used all around the world to test professional athletes and see the level of their fitness. In the start of the season, also in the middle of the season, if they want to check how the progress is going. Yeah. So to start the test, we have to click on the test and then choose the calibration first to check with the tool bank here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please. Ah, yeah. So now we're going to test our. We are going to calibrate with the gas there, Guaramar. I'm going to press on it to start. Now we have we to wait. wait now until it finishes. This sound indicates that it's working uh, properly. It takes approximately three to four minutes to be completed. Yeah. So after approximately three to four minutes, the calibration of the sensor is finished, and now we do the turbine calibration. So first of all, you have to insert inside, and now close it. When he press, press. Okay. Okay. And now approximately he needs to uh, make this procedure about 10 times, so 3 liters of air will go in and out. So now yeah. you, you can start with this. So now, if there is not, if there's not the red sign, it means that it's okay, and we are ready to continue. And as you can see from the laptop, there is no, uh, there is nothing red, so it means everything is as planned, and we, <coughs> and we continue. Uh, first of all, we have to tell to our client that he is that he have to, he has to reach uh, his maximum limits, and when he is too exhausted and he can't perform. Yeah, he have to jump in the in the side of the treadmill. Now, uh, two of us will demonstrate how you have to go out. So now you can see a visual demonstration of what you have to do. So as you are running and you feel that you cannot go anymore, or you feel dizzy, which is another 
area that can can happen in a maximum test, you will have to come out of the treadmill in this way. So while you're running, you have to step out One more time. without getting the mask off cool. to continue and analyze the results, which are, will be your maximum effort. Now we'll continue with the equipment that has to be placed on the athlete. First of all is the mask. As you can see, the mask is chosen to be the appropriate size for the athlete. You can see now the procedure of the mask. It has to be tight, but not too tight so the athlete is comfortable with the mask. As you, as you can see here, the mask is placed, and then there is a test to be tested if the mask is working, which yeah. Tofas will demonstrate now. Yeah. Okay, so he cannot inhale the air, it means that the mask is okay. Is okay. And now the next thing that we have to put is the heart rate monitor, which is one of the most important things because the heart rate indicates many things in this test. So you see now more stores placing the heart rate monitor. As you can see, the heart rate needs to be placed in this area. Close to the heart. So now the mask and the heart rate monitor are ready. We need to place the machine on the mask which will measure the oxygen uptake. So now we And this will be, will be tied in on the treadmill. So uh, it has to have a bit of uh, space to run. So it shouldn't be very close to the treadmill, so it has space to run. So, in a comfortable distance from the treadmill. So now that his details were recorded in the press, the, the athlete is ready to continue with the test. So now we have to ask if he's ready, and if he feels ready, the test will start. So you are ready to start? Yeah. Okay. So now the, is, the test is starting. This is, this is the first minute of the warm-up. And as uh, Kiriago said before, every two minutes we will uh, enter into the exercise mode. So the speed will be increasing every two minutes until the athlete reach his maximum. Because it is a maximum phase, it's very important to start with a warm up so the muscles are warm to avoid any any injuries. So now we have the speed in 4.8, which is in the warm up phase for the athlete to become warm and ready to start the exercise mode. Two seconds, one second. Mm -hmm. Three seconds. Yeah. Now the speed is increasing slowly, slowly. For another minute. It's still in the these speeds are still in the warm-up phase, although it's exercise mode, but it still uh, gives time to the athlete to adjust and be ready for the test.
very important to give continuous support to the athlete, especially in the last stages where he will need uh, to push himself a lot. So psychological support from everyone outside is also very important. Now the athlete is running for eight and a half minutes, speed 10.8. Uh, you can see that it now he's starting to start, start to push. Uh, so it's important to also encourage the athlete to keep going. And, uh, so now we're slowly, slowly going to see on the graph the indications of what is happening in his body. The graph on the left side, the red uh, line shows uh, VO2 consumed and the blue line shows uh, VO2 produced, VO2 yeah, produced. And on the right side, the blue line indicates uh, heart rate and the red line indicates uh, liters of ventilation in a minute. Now the athlete is have minutes, speed work. You can see that you can understand that now he starts to really push. He's reaching close to his limits. Here the VO2 produce and consume are really close. You can see that he's starting to reach uh, very close to his limits. His heart rate is also more than 160, so he's getting close uh, to the anaerobic phase. This indicates the respiratory quotient. Now he's uh, working uh, full on carbohydrates, so. Now we are uh, starting to, um, we are going to see that uh, we are too much going to paddle. So 
this will allow the athlete to return uh, back to his normal, so the heart rate needs to be uh, less than 120 when you finish. So now you, if, if you can step back on the treadmill for the recovery mode, so it's light walking on speed 4. So now he will continue to work until we see that his uh, uh, courses are down to where we want them to be. How much are these courses now, Lucas? First round is uh, 100. Okay, now the test is finished, so uh, we will stop now the procedure for the athlete to come down, he needs to perform some static stretching and also now we need to print the reports and analyze uh, what we found and see how we can help the athlete. The VO2 max is uh, it's 51, 29, which, uh, which is good. And the heart rate is? The heart rate is 182. Um, and the VO2 max, as Gustavino uh, said, is uh, 51.29, which is in the good area. It's not very good or excellent. So it's somewhere that we need to work on. Um, now we'll discuss with the client. Uh, all the results and how we will, in what uh, mood areas we need to work in to reach his uh, maximum uh, performance level. Mm -hmm. I don't know,